Greetings and welcome to today's sharing on the development of MOOCs. I will be sharing with you with regard to the insights and challenges with regard to the development of MOOCs or MOOCs as they are commonly known as. A large number of platforms which are offering MOOCs. For example, we have Masterclass which offers excellent MOOCs from experts and in these series of MOOCs you have the opportunity to interact with experts from different fields ranging from literature to cookery to exploration, acting, you name it, you have a master class which covers that particular MOOC. And these have grained traction over the past year. We also have the MOOCs which are from Coursera and these offer certificates from reputed institutions so you can attend these MOOCs and then obtain a certificate from the respective institution upon completion of your assessment. So this is another opportunity for MOOCs. What are MOOCs? Basically MOOCs are a subset of a very large course and they are cater to what is termed as modular education because now education has become modular due to the changes in the market demand as well as flexibility and lifelong learning concerns. So MOOCs are scalable, you can modularize them and you can scale them up to obtain a degree using uh, in what is termed in some countries uh, micro credentials. So you have micro credentials which you can accumulate and then obtain a degree or certification. MOOCs are also flexible as they can be modified to change changing market demands and they are recognized globally. Need to transition to MOOCs. As an institution, we are faced with many challenges. The first challenge is Uberization of education. The term Uberization implies the education based on market demand and the pricing that is factored into that particular course is determined by market forces rather than predetermined social re requirements. The second aspect is the capitalization of expertise. So development of a MOOC will actually capitalize your expertise and will add value to your expertise. You are also required to continuously improve the quality of your content in order to cater to the demands of the market. And these uh, represent what is known as evolving customer demands. We are also faced in the education industry with the concept of ad automation, which is eliminating a lot of jobs, as well as the changes in the infrastructure itself with regard to tourism in the current pandemic, as well as the electrification of automobile engines, which is, will result in the elimination of a large number of jobs. So these individuals who have lost their jobs will have to be retrained and the only way they can retrain themselves economically is via MOOCs. MOOCs also cater to lifelong learning. For instance, you can take a course in cookery from an expert from master class and you can indulge in your passion in your own time. Of MOOC design and development follows the conventional eddy model, we analyze, design, develop, implement and evaluate. The first aspect which you must be aware of is the market demand and this can be obtained by analysis. So you can utilize big data analytics and buy big data and basically look at the market and the demand for that particular course. This market demand can be determined by using what is known as the keyword searches or the keyword distribution for a particular age group and you can determine that demand for your MOOC. You then have to design the course to cater to market demands and in this case it may involve the tweaking of your expertise. Subsequent to that you need to develop content which is innovative and this is where the role of the content creator, the videographer and animator actually comes into the picture. You then implement your course so the course is implemented via a platform which is cloud-based and you may have issues with the platform itself as well as issues with the students understanding of your content please take note that you the student is your customer and you should ensure that the course caters to customer demand because if you lose traction in the market you will basically lose out on the customers and finally we move on to the evaluation and the uh, 
marketability of the MOOC itself. So this can be obtained via customer surveys as well as analytics. I will demonstrate that to you during the course of this lecture. So how do you begin with the MOOC development? The development of the MOOC begins way before the actual deployment of the MOOC and you have to address these questions personally. The first question is what is my expertise? You must look back at your expertise and this may not be an expertise which you have gained during your PhD or your degrees. It may be an expertise which you have a passion for. The second question, is my expertise up to the mark? Am I on par with my peers? Is my expertise marketable? Or is my expertise just a recycling of existing expertise? This is another aspect which you must look at personally. The third one is, is there a demand for my expertise? And this should not be a limitation because certain individuals or experts have tweaked their expertise to meet market demand. The next aspect is the content development around your expertise. So if you have a subject which is technically challenging, you may have to develop the content based on the tools which are available and these include animations and graphics tools which are currently available in the market as well as augmented reality and virtual reality environments. And the last question you should ask in this current economic situation is, do I feel the need to constantly reinvent myself? As the market forces change and as the professions change, there's a need to constantly reinvent yourself in order to meet market demand. For instance, the current pandemic situation has resulted in the elimination of a significant number of industries, which include tourism, as well as the, for instance, the automobile industry as the, and the travel industry. However, this has led to the development of new areas which need expertise. For instance, the healthcare and diagnostics industry, the online industry which involves the development of content itself, as well as analytics in the, the market space. Okay, we at the Center for eLearning will assist you along the way during the development of your MOOC. With regard to the MOOC development, the first is content design, the second is content development, the third is content delivery, and finally we have certification. So the content design is done in consultation with the expert. The content development is done by our team of videographers and animators. The content delivery will be done via our MOOC platform, and finally certification, which will be also done via our platform. And this will be in the form of digital certificates look at the experience which I had with my MOOC. So we partnered with the Commonwealth of Learning to development of a global MOOC. So the MOOC is actually Introduction to Bio-Risk Management and this MOOC was delivered over a period of five weeks. It's a MOOC which is paced by the instructor and every week we have content delivered to the students and we have an assessment in the form of a quiz at the end of each week. We also have an oral assessment in the form of an assignment, which is done upon completion of the course. Now, there are specific course criteria in order to obtain a certificate of completion or a certificate of attendance. Okay, so we looked at this course in terms of the ID model. So we have bio-risk management, which has a high demand due to the pandemic. So I utilize my expertise in bio-risk management to develop this MOOC. We also had a targeted audience. We did uh, marketing on YouTube. So we use the social media to do marketing by using targeted marketing. So we spend around 400 USD on marketing to reach the audience itself, as well as the other social networks. We did a distribution across the world. So when we did U YouTube marketing for this particular MOOC, we targeted specific regions of the world in which there is a demand for this particular MOOC, as well as age groups and the level of education. So we targeted age group around professionals in the age group of 30 to 40 years who are in the mid of their career, as well as earlier career and postgraduates. So this can all be done via, via the YouTube and marketing using Google Analytics. 
And finally, we focused on certification. So we have a certification which is a digital certificate. The content, so we had a course synopsis, 15 lecture modules, four quizzes and one assignment. Overview is described in we had a course synopsis. So this is an overview of the weeks. So we have five weeks. So I've shown you four weeks. The fifth week is basically assignment. And we have these topics in each week. So each topic is approximately 15 to 20 minutes of video or lecture followed by a quiz. Okay, so you can see the student can actually interact with the instructor using the forums and answer the quiz as well as track their progress using analytics. This is what we obtain from the analytics. So the MOOC platform is linked to an analytics platform which will identify or basically enable you to look at the student performance and we can identify students who are lagging behind and prompt them. So we had a total of 1059 registered users for this MOOC and these users were distributed across 30 three countries across the world from South America. I had one student from Peru and the West Indies and Africa, a significant number of students from Africa and Southeast Asia. We had around 90 students from Malaysia who attended this, this course. So this is the current situation of this MOC, which has already been completed and approximately 230 certificates were issued because the rest of the students could not meet the standard of the MOC and only 129 students were able to successfully complete the MOC and obtain a certificate of completion. So for this particular MOOC, we maintain very high standards because it's related to bio-risk management and we do not want to certify students who do not complete all the elements of the course. For instance, this particular course requires a score of 80% and above in the quiz as well as 80% and above in the assignment itself. Overview of student interaction. So the analytics program constantly tracks interactions. I am right in the center because I have been interacting continuously with students over a period of five weeks. And every day I spend around four weeks, uh, four hours interacting with the students. So that was took up around four to five weeks of my time. So this requires interaction every day, especially on weekends when you'll have a high number of students visiting the course. The traffic load shoots up on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And this is a global course, so you have interaction occurring 24 hours a day. Certificate which we issued finally. So I have blanked out the names of and the signatures. Uh, and this is the student name will appear here. And this is a digital certificate. Now, the good thing about digital certificates is that your employer can actually access these certificates using a URL. And these certificates have been generated using a blockchain technology. So they are all traceable and they can be traced back to the students' respective courses. Now, this is the overview of the time which I spent on developing this MOOC. A total of 590 man hours were spent for this MOOC. I computed the man hours. So the content design took approximately 60 hours in consultation with the the partner institution. So they had certain issues which needed to be resolved with regard to content. The content development itself took around 200 hours. That is the PowerPoint slides ensuring that there is no copyrighted material incorporated into the slides itself as well as development of the text, the proofreading and the spell checking, etc. We then moved on to video editing and the videos basically took up around 60 hours of my time as well as the editing. So I had an assistant to assist me with regard to videos and editing. So basically for a 15 minute lecture, you spend around 12 hours on content development and around two hours on video because each take requires multiple frames. So we'll get into that later when we develop your respective MOC. The delivery of the content, I spent around 120 hours. This included responding to forums over a period of five weeks. And finally, the assessment required 150 hours as I had to assess around 129 assignments which were submitted, check them for plagiarism as well as originality and the 
assessment criteria. That's the time which was spent for the development of this MOOC. You are as follows. If you intend to develop your MOOC, please decide upon your course topic. Complete the documentation and the course synopsis. We have a format for you. You have to attend the training sessions which will be conducted online. Design and develop your content. This is basically your role as you have to develop your respective slides. We have a software in UMS which can be used for screen recording. We will get into that later when we assist you in the design and content development. You can then deliver your course via the UMS MOOC platform and you assess the students and certify them based on their completion of the MOOC. Now you have a choice of two types of MOOC. The first MOOC is conducted over a fixed duration of time. So it will be five weeks. The second type of MOOC is conducted over a flexible duration. This implies that the student can take the MOOC at any given time. However, the criteria for assessment are different as you are not required to manually assess the assignments. So it depends on the preference of the lecturer as well as on the specific market demand. For information, please contact us at the Center for eLearning and you can contact the coordinator for MOOC and OER, Dr. Ng Yap Wang. Thank you for attending this particular session and please stay safe during the current pandemic by complying with the protocols. Thank you very much and I look forward to interacting with you during the course development. Stay safe.